Hi, and welcome to this talk about web, Bluetooth, and Blazor. As developers, we go through different stages, or at least I have. And my first stage was when I was about seven or eight years old. I got my first computer. I remember I, I, I sat down and I wrote 10, print Jimmy, 20, go to 10, and that was my code. I got the computer to do stuff. This was actually my first app, and I'll be happy to share the source code. It's actually already up on GitHub. This was the moment when I decided that I wanted to become a developer. Now, years passed, and, and calculators or, and phones came out. And it's a, it's a very special feeling to deploy something to another device, a small device, something that you can carry with you. The third stage was when I found out circuit boards, Raspberry Pi, Netuino, Arduino, and all of those. I, I remember I ran to my wife, and I, I, I hold, held up the, uh, the Netuino in this case, and I said, look, it blinks, the LED is blinking. And she's like, yes, yeah, so? No, 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 you're not getting it. it it's, the LED is blinking. I made it blink. It, this is my code. I, well, I assume that it was a bigger event for me than for her. But I was just so happy just to get that LED blinking. The next step was when I realized that I can control other manufacturers' devices, get measurements from sensors, turn on and off lights, and that is what we're going to talk about today. How we can control devices through Bluetooth using Blazor. But why should we care? Well, first and foremost, is it just so much fun? And during this year, 4.6 billion Bluetooth devices will be manufactured. As an app developer, we want, to, we want to be there. We want to play with all those toys. And we want to do it with our favorite new framework, Blazor. So we are going to talk about how does Bluetooth low energy work. I'm going to show you how I figured out a Bluetooth protocol, and let's be honest, that's the most fun. And then we're going to go into co code and we're going to control stuff. So my name is Jim Engstrom, and I work as a web developer working on Blazor all day long. And I'm also a Windows development MVP. I am the co-host of a podcast called Coding Off the Work, and we are just starting up our own Twitch channel. So please follow us. But enough about me. Web Bluetooth is an experimental technology that is supported by only a few browsers, or actually, it's most of them. At this point, Samsung Internet, Chrome, Edge, Opera, and a few more does support them. But it definitely start, it definitely the time to start developing with it. Now, I'm not a fan of JavaScript, but I do love my gadgets. So I set out to create a li Blazor library that would solve the JavaScript problems for you. But before we go into the Blossom.Bluetooth framework or, or a NuGet package, let's get a little bit more familiar with Bluetooth and how Bluetooth works. So what I love about Bluetooth Low Energy is that you can ask a device what it can do. That's perfect for us developers. A kind of built-in documentation. So a Bluetooth Low Energy device can tell you what services it has must have, have it at least one. The services are identified as a GUID. There is an organization called the Bluetooth SIG, or the Special Interest Group, that have, have defined and named a bunch of these services and created documentation for them as well. But there are also services that are not in the Bluetooth SIG, and we're going to check out one of those later on. So every service has at least one characteristic. You can think of them as um, methods or events. Every characteristic has at least one way to access them. So for example, read, write, you can think of th those as methods or, or properties. And you have indicate and notify, which are more like events. Let's take a look at one of the Bluetooth SIG specifications the battery service. So it must have a characteristic named battery level. It must have 
a read. It, you must be able to read from it. Sounds reasonable. You want, you want to be able to read from it. And you may have optionally a notify, so you can get notification when things are happening. So if we look at the service in, in the same color scheme as before, we have the BLE device. It has a battery service. It has a battery level characteristic. It must have a read, and it may have a notify. The really cool part about this is that it makes it possible to create generic applications, applications that is going to work with all the devices that implement a battery service, for example. So I've found this scale on net on net. This, an, this is an Anderson scale. Net on net is the Swedish store. It's actually Sensan who makes them. So if we pop to my computer, and I'm going to go into Edge. I'm going to go to edge slash slash Bluetooth internals. So here we can find information about the adapter. We can find devices. And if I start to scan here, you'll see that there's a bunch of different devices. These are all the Bluetooth devices close to me. And we got one called Samsung Food. So let's inspect that one. As you can see, there are uh, four different services here. And if I click one of those, you will see that this particular service has four characteristics. All right, so let's switch back. So I use Edge, looking at the device, comparing the GUIDs to the Bluetooth SIG specifications, and I found that, well, first of all, it identifies as a Samsung scale, or a Samsung food in this case. It has a generic attribute. Gener gen the generic attribute is a service that makes it possible to ask the device anything. It has so something called device information containing device name, manufacturer, and so on. And it has generic access. It contains uh, information like name and address. But there's also one more. Now, I do know that the first three do not give me a weight me measurement. Hmm, so it might be the last one. The one named 000FFB0. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to let you go through all the whole grid. But the most important part is just the first part, the FFB0. The rest of the, the, rest of the grid, grid is actually the same. So let's dig deeper into that one. It has two characteristics. And it has two ways of accessing those characteristics. So I hooked up an event listener, listening to the data coming back and forth to those, and I got 10 bytes back. So I started with not putting any weight on the scale zero grams. So I took a look at the data, and I'm, I'm assuming here that I'm going to get back zero, right? I'm going to get the zero value, all right? And that happens to be these five different, um, different bytes. So I happen to have a uh, energy drink just beside me that weighed 235 grams. So I put it on the scale, and Look and behold, byte number five says 235. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what we were looking for. So I reset the scale, removed the energy drink, and now we are at minus 235. Now bytes seven and nine changed, but byte five is still 235. So I'm assuming that byte nine didn't have anything to do with this, but byte seven is still in play. So I thought that this might be a sign byte. So now I put on 120 grams instead, and suddenly byte 4 changed. So after testing back and forward, back and forward with different ways, this is what I came up with. So byte 4 times 256 plus byte 5. 
and then we have byte 7 for sign. I don't know what the rest of them are, to be honest, but for, for this demo, I only needed these uh, few ones. All right, so this next demo is going to be a legend. Wait for it. Dairy. I'm so sorry. I just couldn't let this one go. I love puns, and, and well, it needed to be in there. So let's switch back to my computer. So this is a client-side Blazor project, and I have already added the NuGet package, the Blossom.Bluetooth NuGet package. So the first thing we need to do is add a piece of JavaScript. So I'm going to say script source. And then I'm going to use content. Content's going to make all the different um, embedded scripts available to me. So I'm going to say content, and then I'm going to say blossom.bluetooth. That's the assembly name, followed by JS interop. So now we have all the, the scripts, the JavaScripts uh, available to us. Then we're going to go into program. And I'm going to add builder.services. And we're going to run an extension method called add blossom Bluetooth. So this is extension method coming from uh, my NuGet package is going to make sure that all the, um, all the objects is going to be available to me when I try to inject them. So let's go to the Anderson scale demo. First thing, we need to add a namespace. So let's add using blossom.bluetooth. Then we need the Bluetooth navigator, and that's uh, it's named the same, th the same as it would be in JavaScript. So I'm going to say inject Bluetooth navigator, and I'm going to name it navigator. Perfect. Then we need to add a weight variable, something that can hold the weight. And since this is in grams, an int is going to be just fine. I'm going to want to show the weight as well in the UI. So I'm going to show the weight. Now we need to add a service, or a string to a service in this case. So I'm going to say service, and I'm going to type that ffb0, and I'm going to type all the other ones as well. Then we need to add the characteristic, the characteristic we want to talk to. So we have a characteristic. And in this case, it's FFB2. And as you can see, the other bytes or the other uh, characters are the same. Next up, we need to add a filter. So this is a filter that is going to show me the, um, I'm going to create a request device query. I'm going to add a filter to that request device query, and I'm going to filter it on services. So what is going to happen is when I run this code, it's going to pop up a, um, a query or a, a um, dialog asking me what, what different um, what, what device do I want to connect to, and it's only going to show those, those devices that has this particular service. Then I need to request a device. So I'm going to say device, await, navigator, request device. I'm going to send in the query. Now for a weight me measurement, I want this to be, I want to put something on a scale. I want to get the, mass, the uh, weight. So let's just go into await, navigator, dot, setup, notify. I'm going to send in the ID of the device. I'm going to send in the service ID, and I'm going to send in the characteristic. Next up, I just need to add an event listener, so navigator.notification, value, notification. There we go. And I also need to handle the notification. So let's go into, let's create a private void, value, notification, object, characteristic, so th this takes a characteristic event argument. And the data is uh, in e.value to array. The weight is 
256 times byte 4 plus byte 5. And then we're going to check data, the, the seventh byte, if it's 1. I want you to just switch those values around so I get, um, so I get minus instead. And then I need to change, I need, need to say state has changed because this is going to happen on another thread. So I need to notify that, hey, something's changed. Let's, let's change that. So these are our, our main characters today. This is the Bluetooth scale, and this is the robot that we're going to talk to in just a minute or so. So I just pressed on the scale. I'm going to start up the demo. So I'm going to say connect. And as you can see, a, a list of all the devices having this particular service ID is going to show up. In this case, the Samsung food, that's perfect. Something went wrong, and that's these things happen. So let's just try one more time. There we go. And as you can see up here, there's a Bluetooth um, icon. So if I press down here, you'll see that the value changes in more or less real time. So with these few lines of code, we can get we can get notifications from these kinds of different um, uh, different uh, Bluetooth devices. While we is a robot manufacturer, they or, or they make toys, but they make robots uh, as well, and they have a bunch of different really cool robots that you can talk Bluetooth to. You, you see some of them, all of these robots up here has a uh, demo code in the GitHub library or, or the GitHub um, repo, so you can check those out. And this one is a little bit hard to show on screen, but as you can see, I have a virtual joystick. If I move the joystick around, the robot moves around accordingly. So let's switch over to some code again. So here we have the RoboSapien demo. And if we uh, check out the code here, you'll see that I have a bunch of different buttons. I have a method called send command. And to that method, I'm going to send in a byte in this case. So if we take a look at the RoboSapien class, I have a bunch of different bytes that I can send to the, the uh, robot. So if we go down here, you will see that all the different robot, or all the different, um, you, you, you remember the service ID, you remember the characteristics ID, and you remember the request device query. I made one change here, and that's instead of, of querying dev the device for devices having that particular de service, I'm saying that I want this, the device that is named RoboSapien Blue specifically. So that's perfect. And then I need to specify here as well that I want to access that particular service. I need to specify all the services that I want to access, otherwise I won't be able to access them. And then we're going to go with Navigator Request Device. So the, the Bluetooth Navigator class works as a kind of a layer between the JavaScript and our C Sharp code. So it's going always going to show the, it, it, it handles all the communication between C Sharp, JavaScript, and your Bluetooth robot for in this case. All right. So we're going to say await navigator.write value async. I'm going to send in the ID, the device ID. I'm going to send in the service ID. I'm going to send in the characteristic, just as before. But I also need to send in a byte array with all the 
uh, bytes that I want to send. In this case, I just want to send one. So let's run this. I'm going to wake up the robot. Perfect, he's awake. So let's go into RoboSapien. And I'm going to click Connect. So hopefully, I will get all the devices. Look at that, named RoboSapien Blue. I'm going to pair it. And hopefully, I will get the Bluetooth icon anytime soon now. No? Let me reload it. So this particular robot has a problem connecting to Windows. There we go. So let's see what it can do. So I'm pressing all these kind of, all these buttons and it's moving accordingly. Ah, oh, I'm I'm so sorry. We're live here. I'm so sorry. I I, I don't know. He, oh, I'm so sorry. He has no manner. So if you want to play around with the Blossom Bluetooth library, please check it out on GitHub. It's also available as a NuGet package. And as I mentioned before, this year, 4.6 billion devices will be manufactured. Pick one. Make an app. It's just so much fun. Um, I promise you, you will love it. And if you have any questions about this presentation or Blazor development in general, please contact me. Thank you so much for listening. And whenever you're ready, over to Lila.